one. You will hear a new student, Tom, talking to a student representative called Rachel about university clubs. You now have 30 seconds to read questions one to four. Hi, welcome to Freshers' Week. I'm Rachel. Can I help you? Oh, hi. Yes, um, I was hoping to find out about some clubs I could join. Well, all the club stands are here in this hall. What were you interested in? Um, not sure. <laughs> I wanted to do something where I could meet people. Well, take this leaflet with details of all the clubs, and see what you think. Oh. It'll probably depend on what day you're free. Like on Mondays, there's the film club. Then on Tuesdays, you've got the climbing club. That's really good. I'm in that. <laughs> <laughs> Then on Wednesdays, you've got chess. If you want something a bit more intellectual, but you should look through carefully because all the clubs run extra activities as well as their normal meetings. Oh yes, I see. So it looks like the film club has discussions after the films. I'd quite like to go to those. Then climbing, <laughs> goodness! It says here that the university has its own climbing wall. That's impressive. And they go on weekend trips.、Mm. Cool. And it says the chess club normally just does games with whoever turns up, but it also runs competitions sometimes. But I bet you've got to be pretty good to do that. Yes, I think so. And how many people are in the clubs? Are they all really full? Well, obviously they're all different. So, for example, the film club has just increased its membership from eighty-five to a hundred and twenty-five, but I think they're hoping to extend it to a hundred and fifty. The climbing club's quite small, forty people. And the chess club is fairly healthy at fifty-five. Right. Okay. So, who do I see if I want to join these clubs? Well, if you go round the stands and speak to the people there, for the film club, that's the events organizer.、Um, for climbing, you'll need the club secretary, and the chess club is organized by one of the maths tutors. Okay. Yep. <laughs> I think I'll start with the climbing club. It sounds good. Oh well, as I said, I'm in that, so I might be able to help you a bit. You now have thirty seconds to read questions five to ten. Okay, it says in the leaflet that they get together twice a month. Is that right? Yes. Oh, you must join. It's really good fun. <laughs> we go away quite a bit to North Wales, and every year we have a special excursion, usually to France, which is where we're going this year in the spring. The weather's too unpredictable in the autumn. Wow, that sounds good. But it must cost a lot. Yeah, but we try and save up for it through subscriptions. So rather than having a huge sum to pay in the month we go, we collect those weekly, so it spreads it out. Good idea. I think I'll definitely join. There are quite good benefits you get from joining. I mean, you need that, don't you? And the university clubs normally try and do deals with local businesses, so it's really worth joining. Like in the climbing club, they've got a special arrangement with one of the shops in town. So if you show your card, you can get money off equipment. Don't think the discount extends to clothes, though. That's really worth it then. 
I'll go over and talk to them now. OK. Hope you do join. <laughs> oh, and another thing I meant to say. If you do become a member, you automatically receive a magazine once a year. It's quite useful and interesting because it goes out to all the national climbing clubs. And the other thing is, if you come to every session, then you can get a complimentary ticket to the big exhibition that's held in Cardiff every year. So, hope to see you. Yeah, well, thanks a lot for your help. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. You'll hear someone talking to a group of university students. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 17. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 17. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Upton University. I hope you are settling in and beginning to find your way around. I know how confusing it can be when you start life at university, and that's why we have Freshers Week to help you find your feet. Before I go any further, I should perhaps introduce myself. My name is Sally Jackson, and I am the Secretary of the Students' Union, which has organized this week of events for you. You will usually find me in the office on the first floor of this building when I'm not attending lectures. Anyway, down to business. Of course, there are a few things that you are obliged to get done during your first week here, but once you've opened a bank account, if you haven't got one already, senior director of studies to discuss which courses you are going to take and signed up with a doctor, there will be plenty of time left to enjoy the events we have arranged for the week. And have we got a lot lined up for you. Throughout the week from Monday to Friday, Every morning, starting at 10 a.m., there will be orientation and welfare events. These will include tours of the campus, which, as you have probably noticed, is the size of a small town with 9,000 residential students, as well as sessions on developing study skills. We also have tours of Upton itself arranged for you, with a bus leaving from outside this building every afternoon at 5 o'clock. There are a number of interesting things to do and see in and around Upton, so you can expect visits to the castle and museum, as well as the popular Ghost Walk. You'll need to sign up for this one, as numbers are limited. Just put your name on the list on the notice board in the entrance lobby. An important event is scheduled for Monday, that's the day after tomorrow, when we will be holding the academic fair. This is an opportunity for you to speak to students and academic staff about the courses that are on offer. The academic fair starts at 1 o'clock, by the way. There are a couple of other fairs that I think will interest you. First of all, we have the Society's Fair on Tuesday the 16th, which I think is an absolute must. You might not believe it, but the university has over 150 societies and sports clubs you can sign up for, so you are sure to find something of interest to you. That also starts at 1 o'clock, and it will be here in the Union Building. 
Also in this building is the trade fair on Wednesday from 2 until 5 in the afternoon. This one might sound a bit strange because you will find a load of banks and other businesses here trying to get your custom. You will find plenty of bargains and, best of all, a lot of the businesses give away stuff for free. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 18 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 18 to 20. We've also got a great entertainment program lined up for you, starting tonight with our welcoming party. We have a top band lined up for your entertainment, but I'm not allowed to say who they are. All I can say is that I am sure you will not be disappointed. So come along to Blackmore Hall at 9 o'clock this evening to get your university experience off to a flying start. Just one point. I'm afraid this event is limited to freshers only. Because of space restrictions, you can't bring a friend tonight. Sorry about that. There's more fun and games on Monday in the Cotswold Theater here on campus. We have booked two of the cleverest comedians in the country, Paul Frazier and Jenny Brown, for a three-hour show. Paul has assured us that he and Jenny have packed the show with new material, and as they always get rave reviews for their shows, I think we can look forward to an evening of great entertainment. That's in the Cotswold Theater on Monday evening at 7.30. Moving along a bit, on Thursday, there is an important date for your diaries. This is the official Freshers' opening ceremony, when the Dean welcomes you to Upton University. So remember, Thursday the 18th from 2.30 to 3.30 in Blackmore Hall. You certainly should go to this one, and by the way, light refreshments will be available. At the end of the week, on Saturday, you have the chance to dress up in your smartest evening wear for the official Freshers Ball. Actually, although it's called a ball, it is quite a relaxed affair, so we are more than happy if you turn up wearing jeans and a t-shirt. The important thing is to relax and enjoy yourselves. Time and place are the same as for this evening's party. Blackmore Hall from 9 in the evening to 3 o'clock in the morning. Right. I think I've covered the most important and exciting events we have lined up for you, but there will be plenty of other things going on throughout the week, so remember to check the notice board in the entrance lobby regularly. Enjoy the rest of the day, and I look forward to meeting as many of you as possible this evening at the welcoming party. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a conversation between a potential student at Clevedon College and a representative in the Information Center. Tation. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24.
Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 24. Good morning, Clevedon College. Can I help you? Yes, please. I'd like some information about evening courses this term. OK. Which subjects are you interested in? Two subjects, actually. Languages and computer skills. OK. What languages are you interested in? Actually, I'm not sure. I have to fulfil a language requirement for school, but I haven't really decided what language to study. Mm. How many language courses do you run each week? We have two every night, from Monday to Friday. I'm sorry, but would you mind going through the schedule for me? Mm, which language on which days? Not at all. Monday to Wednesday are modern European languages, French, Spanish, German, Dutch and Polish. Thursday night we offer ancient languages, Latin and Ancient Greek. And on Friday we finish off with the Asian languages of Hindi and Bengali. Monday to Wednesday, modern European. Thursday, ancient languages and Friday, Asian. Can you spell Bengali, please? Yes, it's B-E-N-G-A-L-I. Great. And how much do the courses cost? Each course costs £25 per person per term. But if you want to do two language courses, there's a 10% discount, but only if you book for two terms. So the 10% discount is if I take two courses for two terms. Is that right? Right. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 25 to 30. Would it be possible for me to book my classes right now? No, sorry, the computer's down. What I suggest you do is call extension 9694. Oh, no, sorry, 6994 after 6pm and ask for Mrs Johnson. I'm sorry. I didn't get that. Did you say 6994 after 6pm? Yes, 6994. Please ask for Mrs Johnson. Thanks. OK. Can we now look at the computer skill courses? Yes, of course. Computer classes always start in the first week of the month. And the way it works is we offer one computer class for the entire month. So you might spend one month on databases, another month on Excel, and so on. Classes meet once a week, on Tuesday afternoons. The next class starts February 1st. OK, so for the upcoming month, February? February is going to be databases. There are 24 places still free on that course, and it costs £40 per person. February... Databases, 24 openings, £40. Pounds. OK. Excel starts in March and that's nearly full. Only four slots left. It's £45. Pounds. OK, Excel. March, only four slots left. Got it. April is Outlook. That is never as popular since it costs so much more. But you get a free CD. It is £60 pounds for the month. And there are 19 places left. OK, April. Outlook, £60. Pounds. Is that it? No. On the 3rd of June, we start a word course. We have 16 vacancies for that at the moment. It's also expensive at £55. Pounds. 3rd of June, word, 16 vacancies, £55. Pounds. 
Now, do I call the same number to book a place in one of these classes? No, you have to call Mary Jones, I think. Yes, Mary Jones, extension 9623. Sorry, could you repeat that number? Yes, extension 9623. Please call her before 6pm. OK, many thanks for all your help. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You are going to hear a conversation between two students about studying abroad. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Hey Mary, how's school going? Haven't seen you in a while. What have you been up to? John, good to see you again. I've been really busy the last couple of weeks. I'm applying to study abroad next year. Really? So am I. I think it will be a great experience to be able to study in another country. What country do you want to go to? At first I wanted to study in Africa, but my parents really don't want me to go there because they think it will be dangerous. So now I'm thinking about going to Spain, Italy or Japan. Actually, I think Africa would be a fascinating place. I would want to go there to visit. Maybe not to study, but definitely I would want to go visit. For next year I want to go to either China or Germany to study, but my parents can't afford any European countries, so maybe... Why China or Germany? Well, I want to go to China because I think it's a really interesting country with a long history. Plus, it has been changing so much, and I think it is a great time to be there. I really want to improve my Chinese also, and I've been taking Mandarin courses the last two semesters. I would want to go to Germany because my mother is German, and I want to learn more about my cultural background. How about you? Why the countries you chose? Well, I want to go to a Spanish-speaking country. I took Spanish in high school, so I figure if I go to a Spanish-speaking country, I'll be better off knowing some of the language already. But I have already been to Mexico many times, and South American countries don't have classes for my major, except for Brazil, but they mostly speak Portuguese there. I would want to go to Italy because I want to do a study about ancient Roman civilization. It has always been a dream of mine to go and see Pompeii and the volcanic ruins. Plus, my family has Italian roots and I love Italian food. I want to go to Japan mainly because my girlfriend was born in Japan and always tells me all of these fascinating stories about Japanese history and culture. I am a big fan of sumo wrestling also. So I've always wanted to see a sumo match in person. I really love sushi and almost all Japanese food. Recently, I have started to watch some Japanese baseball too. But of course, these are all secondary reasons. My main reason is of course my girlfriend and understanding her culture. I don't speak any Japanese though, so that is my major drawback. 
I think it is much better to go to a country if you can speak the language. That's great. When do you have to decide by? I have to finish all my applications this week. I'm really stressed trying to finish everything, on top of all my schoolwork. I'm almost done with my applications. I just have to finish the Italy application. I think my last choice is Italy, so I'm doing that one last. How long do you want to go for? I think I'm only going to go abroad for one semester, or else I won't be able to graduate on time. I have many classes left until I can finish my degree, and I'm not sure if I will be able to take them studying out of the country. I think I might be able to study in Spain because my Spanish is fluent, but definitely not in Italy or Japan, unless they have classes offered in English. I want to go for a year. I've heard that it's better to go for a year because you get a full experience and get a better grasp on the language. But I understand that most people can't finish their degree in time. It was hard trying to decide which country I would rather go to, but I think my first choice is to go to China. I know Germany will be great also. Either way, I will be thrilled to have the opportunity to study there. What's your first choice? I really don't have one. Actually, I think I'm like you. Just being able to study in another country will be great. Either Japan or Spain will be awesome. Italy will be awesome too. But I've been there a bunch of times, so I think I prefer to go somewhere else. Sounds exciting. We'll have to go to class now. It was great talking to you again. See you around next time? Yeah, sure. See you around. Hope that everything goes well. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.